Hey, Silas here. This video is going to be about racial purity. So I'm going to open up with screenshots from a video that was posted by Now This about interracial kids. Actually, it turns out it was an advert for a movie. I mean, it was also an advert for a movie. And as I said, everything is bait. Pretty much everything you see online is trying to sell you something. And <laughs> don't put me against that. I'm trying to get this information out there, but eventually I will be trying to sell you some merchandise. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the video about uh, racial purity. Or no, my video about racial purity, their video about interracial marriage. So here are the screenshots. The, um, it opens up with this kid looking up. I think he's a pretty cute kid. And yes, if you don't think any of the kids in this video are cute, you're definitely 100% racist and you should feel very bad about yourself. We'll get into that later. So here it says, by 2050, the average American will look like this. More and more mixed race people are marrying and having children. More kids. The US Census only started letting people check more than one race in 2000. I mean, I'm guessing technically you could have checked more race, but they wanted you to. I mean, if it's a piece of paper and they give it to you, you can check as many races as you want, right? Okay, anyway. Um, and that number has grown 32% in the last 15 years. So this part, I'm wondering, like, okay, wh how is this related? I'm not really understanding how you jump from the checking. Maybe the people that were checking when they started in 2000, maybe it was, uh, let's say it was, I think they mean like, let's say 5% of the people checked more than two races in 2000. Then in the last 15 years, it's grown 32%. I think that's what they mean. Otherwise, I don't really understand this part over here. But more kids, um, another kid. Then the number of interracial marriages has more than doubled since 1990. Now, when they say the number, they're not necessarily talking about the percentage because there's more people. In, anyway, but, and today our identities and relationships rarely fit into a single box. Only 50 years ago, interracial marriage was illegal in the United States. Until 1967, when the Supreme Court overturned the law in Loving versus Virginia, which was a landmark case brought by, brought by Richard and Mildred Loving, who you see here being portrayed in the movie, who had been sentenced to prison just for marrying each other. Then it goes to, because of them, this is what the future looks like. Thank you, lovings. And then it goes with some clips of the different families and their kids. I mean, it's look like happy families. Head to theaters now and see loving now. So yeah, as I said, they're trying to sell you something to go watch the movie. But then some things in here, they're talking about, okay, it was illegal to get married. And then it was a Supreme Court case that, yes, the Supreme Court made it legal. Why was it illegal to be married anyway before? Why was the Supreme Court, why were the laws involved in marriage? Why are the laws still, why is the court still involved in marriage? You need to ask yourself that. Who made interracial marriage illegal to begin with? It was the courts. So the same courts are the ones who supposedly really helped us. And yes, I'm not saying the Loving case didn't help. I mean, it's definitely great that what they did. And I think it's a good thing that that has come out. But recently, now, when it comes to when you have people who are transracial, like uh, the Rachel, Do Rachel Dolezal situation, where she was <clears throat> a top member in one of the NAACP uh, organizations, and it turns out she was white, and she says she identifies as a black person. So how many people checking these multiracial things in the census are multiracial? Why is there purpose? Why is the census even there? Why are they letting your trees to do this? to check one or more names. Why, why is this, why? <laughs> okay, so going back on the whole why thing, I'd like to focus on racial purity. What do people mean when they say check one box? What do people mean when they say racial purity? What's the purpose of this video? Why do people have such a positive reaction to this video? Like, yeah, this is how the world should be. Or why do some people recoil to this video? Because they definitely are people who see mixing of races and think this is not a positive thing. Just recently, I was at the Scars and Stripes event and talked to, I was standing out there and one of the, a black person came up. Well, he looked black. <laughs> okay, he was black. So African-American came up to me and he saw I was 
appeared black too. So he's like, look, why are you supporting Trump? Because I was there with the people who were Trump supporters. And during the conversation, he was talking about different racisms and saying Trump calls people blacks. And I was like, okay, is that really racist? Then he says, Trump is saying the country should be for, Trump's people are saying the country should be for white people. Then I asked him, when you have African-American women saying African-American men should only date African-American women, like they shouldn't go with white women, white women are taking our men, is that racist? And he paused and thought, yeah, it kind of is racist. So what is race? What do people say mean when they say racial purity? You know, with this video, I doubt that the average child of the United States is going to be that way if current, tre if current trends continue in 2050. That's really close. It's like 30 years away from now. I don't think that's going to be the case. Even if it is, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't think that's what's going to be. But now you have multiple race, like separatist movements going up. There's white nationalism. There's been black nationalism for a while. There's La Raza, which is the race, who are fighting for more like the Hispanic nationalities. And you're wondering, okay, what is racial purity? When somebody talks about racial purity, what do they mean? Like, what is a race? How do you define somebody who's pure race and who's mixed race? Like in this video, they said mixed race couples have been having, have been marrying and having kids, mixed race people. So I think necessarily meaning two people of two opposite races or the parents themselves mixed race to begin with. In the video, it looked like people who are just separate races. So it's rather clear to define, I think, I mean, it's more clear to define black people then white people and then asian people now when it comes to like the hispanics and the arabic people i think those are transitionary if it makes sense they're kind of like transitionary races and then now you talk about them like when you talk about latin america they talk about it's an involvement of the portuguese and the spanish who are european by all intents and purposes white people they come to Latin America, South America, and mix with the people that are in there, and that's why they call them mestizo people, I think. It's like a mixture. So you have the, like the Aztecs, the Incans, the native people there, they get mixed with those races. Because one thing I've been asking people, talking about, okay, this is a pure race American, or a white American, or a European American, and then I say, okay, if that's considered to be a white person, because your grandparents moved here from Germany three generations ago, and they have only intermarried within other, other families that also moved here from Germany three years ago. So you've maintained that genetic purity, and now you're considered a white American. Now, what if you have somebody who moved from Portugal to Brazil three generations ago, and they've only intermarried within those families, within the Portuguese families of three generations? They are technically as white as the Germans. So would they be considered white South Americans or just white Americans if you're just considering the continent of America? No, but when they come up, they're normally treated as Latin Americans. So where is... That's the problem with, I think, not identifying what people are talking about when they actually talk about race. There's a mixture between nationality, location, culture, and all these things. And I think that's what I'm trying to establish with this talk is... What is racial purity? Because when you think about it with Barack Obama, he was considered black by many people and definitely his children are considered black. But he was, I considered him to be mixed race. And, and I really thought that would be actually what America would focus on, what a lot of people would focus on and say, look, he's an example of this melting pot. He's an example of people coming together of how America people from different races and cultures and locations and ideals can come together and co and create this person that now is a president. But no, he ended up getting out there, being our president for black people, being the first black president for other people who were like, yes, look, we're over racism, now we have a black president in there, people are thinking, yes, a black community is going to now come up because this person is black and he's like us and then he'll do things. Okay, so that's not the case with Barack Obama. He came out, that was a mixed race, well, in my opinion, it was a mixed race relationship. Unless you still want to stick on the one drop rule and say if somebody has one drop of blackness, that makes them completely black. So for the people who say 
races should stay within their races and shouldn't go outside of the race or there's just general struggles between certain races. Would it have been better for them if Barack Obama had married somebody else that was also of mixed race instead of Michelle Obama? Would it have been better if it had been a sub-Saharan African and European ethnicity mix or what if it was half Indonesian and European just like Barack Obama's half sister who is also half Indonesian and half European? So wouldn't it have been better if the kids were raised in Indonesia because he was raised in Indonesia and he might have been able to relate more to them as kids and what they were going through as kids by having them live in an area that he grew familiar with in kids as, as a kid. So when you go within the na European national boundaries, there are several genetic differences between the peoples. So should Scandinavians stay pure and avoid the Greeks? Or should the Irish be away from the Scots? Or where exactly on the Eurasian landmass does race change from Caucasian to Asian or to Arab? So depending on how someone defines these terms, there are three races or upwards of 30 in the different kind of writings and studies that I've found. I'll leave a link to those in the low bar. So what defines purity in the cases is something that many are unable to define assuming there is such a thing as a racially pure person. So there are many challenges for interracial couples some of them being culture and often a separation or a distance away from one's familial structure. So what I'm trying to say is not having different cultural values and also being away from the extended family, extended relatives. Like if you're close by, then you can just drop the kids over at grandma's or grandpa can come over and take care of your kid, pick up your kid, drop your kid off somewhere and have that support structure by being in close vicinity of the extended family. So now if a third generational West African American and a third generational German American who were raised in small town USA got together and married in that small town, would it somehow be racially more beneficial for them to go to Germany or Africa to find a partner with same skin pigmentation or same genetic makeup? I would argue that no. In addition, we know that getting someone genetically as close to you as possible is not the best because most of the people talking about racial purity are not necessarily advocating for incest or inbreeding. This knowledge is shared by more traditionally tribal societies. For example, in my experience within the 42 tribes of Kenya, there are steps made to prevent incest, yet remain relatively within the tribe. Like they'll make sure that, that's why there's such strong familial ties, I think, to the lands and locations where if you're going to marry, they'll want you to go to a couple of villages away because they'll be sure as long as you keep the lineage of the names of the people or the locations of these people, you can kind of track and kind of be sure that, okay, this person is not your cousin, this person is not your direct relative. There's actually ways to tell that this is from outside your genetic stock. And also marriages were used to build connections and build stronger family ties and add other people to your family. So it's kind of pointless to do it within the family. So th though I do not deny that there's cultural behavior that fits into racial groups, Certain races do seem to ex display or express certain cultural practices. I mean, if you live in a certain location, the same things that make you develop a certain skin color are also the same things that you would adjust to culturally and have different kind of foods that you eat, different kind of practices that you eat, different kind of stories that you tell that form your culture. So this makes complete sense that you'd have differences in cultures that actually go along racial lines, however you want to define them. Now, with the present time, the current year plus two, that you have people traveling around and interacting with different people and getting access to different information, I think it's starting to blur the lines between what races and cultures go together. For example, if you had a native Fijian, this is a tribal Fijian, if they were raised in a family that was Catholic, took care of each other, large family, always <laughs> calling each other, checking in on each other, supporting each other in that way. And then they met somebody that was German, raised in a Catholic family, also another large family that stays together. They're as European, as racially European, white, racially pure as you'd want to say. If they met each other, they would probably get along better than either of these people meeting somebody of a similar race that was raised in a single parent household 
by somebody that was an ardent anti-theist and was somewhat abusive. Now, that just shows that, yes, race does play a part, but to me, in my opinion, culture plays a much bigger part. I think both of these things are things we need to define. We need to define what exactly do people mean when they say race? What exactly do they mean when they say racial purity? And I'd like to finish off with reading this thing. Like, when does a race switch to another race and when does it become something entirely new? And why I'm thinking culture is a big part of this is due to language. I think language, the way you communicate, is a big thing. So you can check this out on the wall with me. Uh, it was an interesting post that somebody posted about how English has changed over the last 1,000 years. This is a reading of the 23rd of Psalm. This is a verse in the Bible. So in Old English, from the year, year 800 to 1066, Dirthen me right, ne baith me nanis God is one, and ye may guess it on swaith good foil hand, and fede me be waitra strathum. So that's in Old English, 800-1066. I'm sure I probably butchered the actual uh, pronunciation of a lot of that. But yeah, let's go to Middle English, from the year 1100 to 1500s. Our Lord gorneth me, and nothing shall defail unto me. In the stead, O pastor, he set me there. He nourished me upon water on filing. Hmm. So yeah, you can see there, not that many eyes in that. It's there in defailin, but yes, a lot of... For the ing, ing thing, for the verb, for the action thing, it was just ying. And somebody had posted that, I posted this on my wall, and somebody commented that there was a conquering of the Gauls or something that came between the Old English and the Middle English that changed it a lot. And I'll get back to that after the end. King James Bible, 1611. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Okay, that's pretty... Pretty understandable, I think. I think most people would get what's going on there. But now here in modern English, which is 1989. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me to still waters. So I think you can see the slight change here going by the Lord is my shepherd in both. But I lack nothing. I shall not want. Uh, then he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. This one, he lets me lie down in green pastures. I think that's a little change in how people view themselves with free will, where people are saying, okay, it's not necessarily God controlling me to do this, but it's me choosing to go out there and do this. Uh, he leadeth me to still waters. He leadeth me to beside the still waters. Yeah, because that one's pretty much the same. But I'm just showing here, like, when did English change? You know, somebody was talking about, okay, when was the stratification or the systemization of the English language. What was the purpose of changing? Why did you need to change this and actually be established like this is a language, this is how it's going to be spoken across these areas? And I think it was probably related to do with the need for the government or the need for governance or this need of controlling or having people communicate and understand enough of these ideas on a larger scale. So it got to the point where it was beneficial to have more people be able to speak in the same language. And I think that's a big thing, that's a big clutch thing for talking about here. Communication, being able to understand what people are saying. As you see here, Old English is essentially an entirely different language than Modern English. Somebody posted something on my wall, and I think it was in German, it was in some other language, that seemed a lot closer to Old English than actual English. So when does it switch? When does it get to the point where something is no longer English? When does it get to a point in history where you go back to the point where apparently these Anglo-Saxon traditions, these English traditions that make people white, white Europeans. So what I'm trying to get at here is you can see here with the development from Old English to Modern English. Where does it get to the point where it is not recognizable, where it's almost essentially a different language? Where does this happen with races as well? When does it get to the point where this is no longer that race? You know, you, in Kenya, you have a situation where there's still 42 very different tribes that have different languages, different cultures. But, of course, when the tribes are in similar locations, 
if you speak one la language, like you speak Luya, you can understand some of the Banluya, or you can understand, I think those are two separate ones. Again, call me out. If you guys know this, there might be a difference with Abaluya and Luya, or they might be the same tribe. But now when you go to something like Luya and Luo, which live in the Western Kenya area, by Lake Victoria, there's some crossover in the language, yet the people can still say, that's a Luo, that's a Luya, even just by looking at the person, not even having to hear their name. Yet when you get to the point where you look at somebody who's like a Kalenjin who lives closer to the central of Kenya, and then you go to a Luya, those are, the languages don't have as much crossover and the features are also a lot different. So the similar thing has happened in Europe. A similar thing has happened in Asia and a lot of these, I don't want to say older cultures because technically Africa is a very old culture. It's just they didn't keep as good of a track historically of writing these things down. But random things, watching Transformers, uh, the latest Transformers, which I think you should watch, it's just boom, boom, bomb, bomb, there's, there's, no, there's not much substance in it, but that's what you're going to, it's an ad, it's bait, they're trying to sell toys, that's what they're there for. But there was something they were talking about there, showing about the history, that main battle in that movie, the historical battle, now we talk about Anglo-Saxon tradition, but there was a time when the Saxon tribes were invaders, the Saxon tribes were trying to kill them off. And then eventually peace happened or the war stopped and those people united and created a new culture. So there was a time when there were technically different tribes. Were they different races? Were they entirely different races? Would you have considered them different races? Just how you go to a place like in Kenya and you say, okay, it's just the black race, but within that country, they have tribes and they actually do consider themselves almost to different races. Where it's the point where I do know Europeans do look different. You can actually tell, like Scandinavians look somewhat different than the Mediterranean peoples, or the Spanish people look somewhat different than the Russian peoples or the Eastern European peoples in general. There are differences there, but the lines may not be as, they might not be as evident as they are due to a lot more intermixing of tribes of what might be considered races. So this is just a lot of rambling, a lot of different thoughts, and I just want to share this, and back to the question, what do you mean when you say racial purity? When somebody says, I am of this race, what do they mean by that? What do you mean when you say you're of a certain race? Do you mean culture? Is interracial necessary intercultural, which is more important? Can race be changed? When does it change? I think culture can be adopted, yet there's definitely some there's probably some very good reasons why certain races are more predisposed to certain cultures but yeah um that's it for now and uh till next video like share and subscribe links in the low bar and bye